Hey guys, it's Carolina here from Carolina's Crafts and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be paper matting my Scrappy Christmas Crafts album that I made for August of 2022. And I am going to be using this paper pad called Farmhouse Christmas. It is a six by six paper pad. I think we'll be able to make it work. And I do also have some frames and tags from the collection that look like this. So I will use whatever I can um, to also embellish and make the cover and whatever because I don't think there's any three by four cut aparts in here. I see some like other cut aparts but nothing that's like a three by four so I may just pull from um, some of the die cuts and use like a paper background so we shall see what we're gonna do but I hope that this is helpful in helping you guys figure out the measurements and how to put this album together. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take out one sheet of each paper, like this one. I'm probably going to use this side. This one I could use either side. This one I'm going to use that side. Either side, either side. Probably this side. Probably that side. This one's the either side. And I'm just trying to go through them and pick out just the first 12. Oh my goodness, the next one's ripping here. Okay, so I got my first 12 sheets. I'm gonna try to just work with those 12 first and see how far um, we come along. So first, I'm just gonna grab my two signatures and kind of see what I'm gonna do here. Okay, so I'm gonna be moving around um, a bit in this album just because I don't wanna work on like these pockets and things until I have the full pages done at least. So let's just get started on the full pages. So the full size sheet pages are going to measure, let's see, they're gonna measure four, uh, four, actually they could probably be four. So four inches by five and seven eighths. Before I do cut that, let me just make sure that that would work with a scrap paper. I know this is black on black, but. All right, we're gonna make it four and one eighth by five and seven eighths. So let's do my first paper, cutting this at four and one eighth. That's a scrap and then five and seven eighths. All right, so that one's gonna go here. Okay, I'm gonna paper clip that. And then I do have the back side of this, which I'm thinking, ooh, these fit perfectly. So I'm gonna cut this at five and seven eighths too. And I could use that scrap for somewhere else, which I'm thinking I will use right here. And that fits perfectly on those pocket pages. All right, so I have this full page here.
Okay, this right here, I'm gonna make two and a quarter. I guess we could go two and a half um, by five and seven eighths. And that's gonna be that little filler piece. So two and a half by five and seven eighths. And that's gonna go right here. And then I need a page in the center. So let's see. So this is going to be four and one eighth for that other full size page. So four and one eighth by five and seven eighths. Okay, so this is what we have here so far, like that. And then that flips this way. So I need a page here. Um, Let's do like another, maybe let's do, I don't know, that's too much weight. Okay, I like this one. So this needs to be for this flat page, it needs to be three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Okay, so that's this flap here. All right, that's perfect. And then this goes like that. And then I need this piece here. So for that, let me see what I have in terms of cut aparts. I think I like this one. And I'm just going to cut the tag piece off so that it has a straight top, just like that. And we can paper mat that with some kind of a design. Um, so maybe I feel like I need to triple mat that, but um, or maybe we'll just use like a solid cardstock. So for now, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, and we'll come back to that. So we got that. That this flips open, and then we're off to this page. So here again, I need. Um, pocket page let's see so four and one eighth by five and seven eighth and that could go on this full size page here And then we need one here. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely need the more than full, the 12 sheets of paper. Let me go on to the second signature just so I could fill in some of these blanks. Um, I think I'll use this here. Some of those pockets. So there's that pocket there, and I had this also. Hmm, hold on. Maybe not. Let's use... I think we'll use this one instead on this pocket page. Hmm. 
And then we could use this red scrap that I have. So all the heights are going to be five and seven eighths. Okay, so that works there. Nope. And then maybe this. Or maybe we'll do, oh, I like this one better. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this one at four and one eighth for another full size page. by five and seven eight. Okay, so that's gonna go here. Okay. Um, I need another one here. Oh, I need a background for this. This one I'm thinking, it has to be like, it depends on like what cut apart I'm gonna use there. And I feel a little limited on cut aparts. Maybe we'll use this tag. Okay, I'm going to cut and I'm just going to use this part here. And then I'll go there. So we can mat that background with um, maybe the black. I wanna try and do the black because then the papers would be like a red and a green. Let me see. What other scraps do I have? It would probably have to be this one. So red and then green, which I think is fine. So I'm gonna cut this piece down to four and one eighth. By five and seven eighths. And that'll be the background of this. And then we need a three and one, a uh, three by four. Okay, so this is a three by four here, and this could be the background for that, and then probably some gold around this, and then that would be green. This is the next, wait, nope, there's this page, and then this page. So here, I need to do something also, but I need to cut apart for this section, and I'm thinking, let me get this die cut. Okay, that's a good die cut. And maybe we'll do the green. So this one I'll cut to three by four also. So that is three by four here. So that could go like that. Um, scrappies for top and bottom here usually would be the same scrap. I don't know what I have yet, so we'll come back to that. And I need a full size sheet here, which I'm thinking we could do this one. So four and one eighth. by five and seven eighths. Okay, so that would go here. 
And then this I'm thinking like some kind of a red. So this one looks like this so far. You've got this, to this, to this, and we need a background also. I'm definitely gonna need some more paper. Yeah, cause that doesn't work. Okay, um, so here the background, I'll cut up this one, four and one eighth by five and seven eighth, and that'll be this background, or actually, that could be this background. So then it goes to that. And then I still need one for here, but now we need more paper. So we've used up our 12 sheets at this point. Let's use, I really like the striped, so we're just gonna have to go with it. Four and one eighth, even though I really like the floral on the other side too, but what can you do? Okay, so there's this one. That's going to go there. All right, then we have some of these blank pages we need to fill in. And I still have this page also. So let's see what we could do here. I'm going to move this over a little bit so you guys can see a little better. Um, I need a bigger scrap page. I don't think I have one. I think we need to pull another sheet. But what I do have is like this scrap or this scrap. That could actually go on the front cover. So you see how there's like a pocket here? Those could go there. So I'm thinking, let's see, since that's the first page, I want something, maybe we'll do this here. And yeah, I like it. Okay, so this we're gonna cut at five and seven eighths. So that's my pocket piece. Just like that. And then this one, that scrap piece is good. So I'm just gonna cut off the rest, line that up and go straight up and then cut that at five and seven eighths. So this scrap actually measures three by five and seven eighths. And that's gonna go right under here, just like that. So we got that piece. We need something there, that's good. We need this page. Um, this one, we can use a scrap for the pocket. I'm almost gonna say to go with the green. And then my other scraps are just like these strips. So you could definitely make more pockets if you wanna use these up for sure. Um, but I think that's my biggest scrap. I don't think these would work, nope. So we're gonna, we gotta use this one. It's my biggest scrap here. So I'm gonna trace this. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it flat down and yeah. But then I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter. So lay that down, face down onto your pattern paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. I don't know if you guys could see the lines that I drew, but they are there. And I'm gonna go a little bit shorter. So this one's a little hard to line up. You really gotta look at where your marks are and then go a little shorter. All right, so this is the piece that I have. And this should work. It's a little too big still. So I'm gonna cut off another piece here. Okay. And 
and then just a little bit too long. All right, and that works for my pocket page. So I'm gonna paper clip that back, but I do still need a full size sheet here. So I'm thinking, what was this one? Oh, we used that side. So I think I'm just gonna grab the full wood sheet now. And this one does have to be the full page because this doesn't go all the way. So you're still gonna see that part. So this does have to be the four and one eighth by five and seven eighth size. Okay, and that's gonna go right here. All right, we almost have all of our pages pretty much laid out. We got this one that we need. Everything else looks like it's done. This one just needs a green, um, like solid paper that I'm gonna put there. Oh, we need the top and bottom here. So I'm thinking the only one I have the same is this, can't use that one. Or we could do different reds. We could do stripes and um, the plaid on the bottom. Yeah, I think maybe that's what we're gonna do because I do wanna get some red incorporated into here instead of just both wood. I could do both wood. I mean, that looks good too. Maybe I'll do that. Do, do, do. Maybe. Um, so what I actually figured out with this, I think I'm actually just gonna glue this down and then whatever size, like wherever it ends up being, you have to measure your pieces. And I'm also gonna incorporate some red in here. All right, so you're gonna put that down, try to get it in the center as best as possible, fold it over, make sure nothing gets caught. Um, but you're gonna need a piece that measures three by four on the inside as well. Approximately, it's gonna be like a little bit more. So I do have some red paper scraps going on here. Um, and I think I'm gonna do, uh, let's try three and one eighth by four and one eighth. Or, yeah, we'll try three and one eighth by four and one eighth. I may need to cut it down even smaller, but my bottom layer kind of needs to be a little bit bigger. So if this goes here, yeah, that's actually perfect, except for the height here. So it's gonna be four and one eighth by three. Okay, let's see that. That's perfect, so four and one eighth by three. Um, for that layer and then what other other scraps you're gonna need you're just gonna measure those out so mine for example are gonna be so this measure is one and three eighth I'm gonna make it one and a quarter and the width is gonna be four and one eighth so four and one eighth and one and a quarter And that's my paper scrap up here, just like that. And I'm leaving some of that black border in case you guys were wondering. But where did my green piece go here? Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. So this would go here, 
just slid off. Okay, and then my bottom piece here. Well, that's kind of hard. I gotta glue the inside first so I could measure accurately. Okay, and again, I, I do want some of that black border, I'm thinking, but I don't want to make it too big. So this is one and a half. So let's go for one and three eighths for that bottom piece by four and one eighth. But your measurements are going to be different because it's going to depend on how you placed your center flat piece. So yours may be a little bit different, but then this one's going to go right here, just like that. And I think that looks good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and glue everything down now. Everything is paper clipped, but I got to glue it down. So I'm going to glue it down and I'll be back to show you guys what's next. Okay, guys, I am back and I did all of my paper matting just as I showed you guys. And then I added in like photo mat areas where I needed to. I don't have any cut aparts yet and I don't know what I'm doing for cut aparts. So I think for this video, I'm not gonna tuck in any cut aparts, but normally I would um, put some cut aparts in there that have like a white back to it or mat them onto black cardstock and white back or make them like foldable. But this collection, I don't have like three by four cut aparts like I would have liked for this. So I have to find some and go through my stash. Um, so these are all paper matted. As you guys could see, just like that, here's um, a pocket here. And then this next page, pocket here that will get some cut aparts. Then we have our waterfall that I did put some strips in between already. And then we have our next page. And this is our little flip up here. I didn't photo mat that because I was thinking of adding a little ribbon down there, which I'll show you guys and then this page and this page. So let's do that little ribbon piece because um, I have a scrap here. I think this would be okay, right? Let me see if this one, um, no, I'm gonna do this black scrap, I think. And this one too. No, I think I just need like some regular black. Do I have regular black people? I have a candy cane. The seam binding is not really going to work because it's crinkly. Okay, I guess I don't have regular black. Let me go through my stash. Okay, I have one of these. I think this will be just fine. So I'm going to just cut a piece off of this ribbon. And I'm going to be attaching that up top here to the center. And I am going to photo map this also, just so you can't see like that ribbon, but all I did was add a piece of tape there. And, oh, how do people do those like loop-de-loops? Like that. That's cute. Let me see how that looks. Yeah, don't like that with the little loop-de-loop. -loop. Oh my goodness. All right, so how about that? That's better. All right, so I'm going to go back in with more tape, trying to keep that stuck down. And then I do have um, another piece of three by four, just some solid. And I'm just cutting off the little frayed edges. I 
All right, and that's gonna go right there. Okay, so there's that and I mean you could have totally added in like a closure or whatever but I like a magnet but I like this little ribbon thing so people know that this flips open so I just decided to do that there and now let's start putting our album together um, which means I have to decide on my front and back covers and my spine which I kind of like this for my spine and just some scrappies that we have left over because I do have some. Um, I have a couple of options. I have this one, this one, this one, or this one. I also need one for the outside. So let's see, actually this one is kind of nice for the outside, but let's see. Um, for my inside paper here, I need something that matches with this because that's the first page that you're gonna see. Um, I mean, if we do that there, what I put in the center, this one? Or that one's not bad. I think I'm going to go with this one. All right, so, and this is going to be my center spine piece. So this measures one and a half, and I'm going to try to cut these as big as possible. I think we're going for six and a quarter. And I know the ones on the front cover, I'm going to need to paper mat with some gold. six and a quarter height yeah um, and one and a half ish so I'm gonna cut down to one and a half first and see how much more I need to cut down after which actually that fits perfect all right so I'm gonna attach that and I told you guys we need to do the spine um, decorating first before we attach the spine Okay, so that works out perfectly. Okay, and then this one, I'm gonna try to do six and a quarter by a little less than four and a half, but I know I'm gonna need to do a gold paper mat. So I got some gold foil paper. I'll link it down below for you guys. Um, so what I say, six and a quarter by Let's just do four and a half. We could cut it down later. Okay, so a little bit less than four and a half. Let's go for four and three eighths. And see how that looks. Okay, that's perfect. And then this is the paper that's going to go on the front. So I'm going to try to cut this at six and one eighth. Um, by four and a quarter. So let's do four and a quarter. And let's see if we could do six and one eighth. Ah, it's cutting close. I have to do like six and one sixteenth. And that's just the way that it works out. Oh, that actually works out good. Okay, so that's gonna be going there. And now I also need a back piece. So again, let's cut another piece that's six and a quarter by four and three eighths. And we gotta figure out this back layer. So let's see. Probably something with a little bit more green would be good. 
Maybe this one. Or do I have that here? I would have some there, so maybe not. Oh man, wait a second. I think we're gonna switch this to here because I, when I open the pages, I don't want it on the same side. So now this is opposite side. Okay, I think we're gonna put this one here on the front. So this was four and a quarter. buy as much as I could get so like six and one sixteenth all right and that's gonna be this piece right there all right so let me glue those down and then we'll work on attaching these to the hinge and attaching the hinge as well so here you can totally add things to the back covers or the inside covers um, if you want to add a pocket, you can. If you want to add another flip out page, you could do that before you glue this down. Um, I'm just leaving mine blank. That's just how I did my last one. So I'm going to show you guys again. Um, but I mean, I feel like there's plenty of pockets already throughout. I think one cool thing that would be good on this is to add like an accordion pocket to the back I think that might be nice but I'm just gonna leave mine the way it is the way I'm sharing showing you guys but that's an option like that would be cute or you could just add another waterfall if you add a waterfall I'd probably add it on the inside front cover though instead of the back but you could add it wherever you want all right so I got that stuck down now we're gonna attach our spine. So this was my, or my hinge. All right, so I'm just gonna take this off just a little bit for now. And I'm gonna try to line it up as best as possible to the center. So make sure you have the same amount top and bottom. You wanna make sure it's straight. And that looks pretty good. Or I guess we could go like this. Oh, that's easier. Flatten it out and make sure the edges are even. And then go ahead and take off the rest. There we go. We figured out our, our own way to do this. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is add a strip down the center here. So let's see what scraps I have. If I add red, red might be nice. That would be in between here. Okay, so I'm going to cut this to um, a little less than half an inch. So like three eighths of an inch or maybe just one less than the half inch mark. And that's at six inches. So I'm going to cut mine down a little less than this. No, yeah, five and seven eighths. And that's going to go right there in the center. Okay, so now we have that hinge. Make sure it's stuck down, guys, whatever you do. Make sure you really do burnish that. You don't want anything to happen to it. You don't want it to fall off. Um, and now we're gonna start adding in our signature. So I'm gonna start with that six, second signature first. I think it's a little bit easier to add on. So I'm gonna attach it in between where this page still kind of like flips out. So we have this page and then this page, but there was that opening there. So where that flips out, that's where you're attaching this to. So I'm going to line up my pages just like that. I want it straight and then I'm going to go in and start taking off, um, peeling back some of that tape.
Okay, just like that. Then this other side is still not stuck down, but what you're gonna do is peel that off now. And I think I'm gonna do, I mean, I'm not adding any inserts, but you totally can. So I'm just adding a strip of glue to the top here. So it's gonna be a side loading insert. If you wanna top loading, then add your strip of glue down here. But I'm probably not gonna add in anything in those pieces anyway. And then go ahead and make sure that's glued down. Yeah, it's on this page, I think. So my insert would go right here if I wanted something, um, but I'm probably not going to. Then this one, same idea here, open it up, make sure it's on the hinge and see how that looks. Okay, and when you're ready to just kind of put it down, then go ahead and take that tape off. Okay, there's one side and then the other side. I'm gonna peel this back, add my strip of glue at the top. And then just like that. All right, so that is our floating hinge. Looks just like that. So that is all ready. Now I get to do my front and back covers. So I'm gonna add this ribbon here to my front and back, and I'm gonna add a piece of tape to hold the ribbon. And this measures six and a half, so about three and a quarter. That's my halfway mark. And then just however much I think is good. So I just kind of go down to here. Cut it at an angle. And then I'm gonna do another one for the back side. Okay, so before I do the back, let me tape this one down. And then I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna add another piece of tape where that one kind of lines up in the middle. just to hold my next ribbon in place. And then same thing here, I'm gonna add more tape around it to make sure it stays. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on my cover so my cover I need to do the gold kind of outline again and I think this one's gonna be might be the same size like four and three eighths by we might actually do six and three eighths this time so let me see my piece here nope I need a new piece I'm gonna cut it at four and a half first just to see if that might fit better by uh, I feel like I need to do six and a quarter. You know what, let's do six and three eighths. No, we'll do six and a quarter. And I think um, if we add another layer, that would look nice with another layer. So I'm gonna cut this shorter. Let's make this four and a quarter. We're gonna make the other, we're gonna do another layer. We're gonna do two layers, another white one. Or maybe we'll do red, actually. I'm going to do a red layer 
that measures four and three eighths. So I'm gonna do two of those, one for the back already. And that's gonna be by six and three eighths. Okay, so let's see. That works out perfectly like that. And then I'm gonna do my pattern paper layer. And this is gonna be like six and one sixteenth by four and one eighth. Perfect. So we're gonna triple layer these and that looks good. Okay, so my spine is gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna cut this to six and three eighths by one and a half. Let me make sure that works. Nope, it needs to be bigger. Okay, I'm gonna use a scrap piece. <laughs> Let's do one and five eighths. Or, let do this. Okay, so one and five eighths. I cut it a little bigger for a second here, but um, it's a little too big. Okay, one and five eighths is perfect by six and three eighths. Okay, I do need a gold layer. So I'm gonna use this piece. Um, that was one and five eighths before, so now let's do one and a half by six and a quarter. Okay, and then I think I'm gonna do this piece. So now this one is gonna be one and three eighths by six and one eighth. Beautiful. And then we just need the back piece so I think this was the same size as this. Yeah. And then I need my gold layer. So this has got to be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Okay, four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'm almost wondering if I should just do like the strips of paper on the back to use up some of my scraps. So I do have these and this also. I think we might do that um, just so I could use up some of those scraps. So let me try and arrange this. Oh, I guess I only need three pieces. Oh, I. I like, oh man, oh, okay. I think I like that. So I'm going to cut all of these 
to be the six and like one sixteenth inch height just so I know that they fit. Okay, just like that. And then I know I have some space, so I'm gonna do a little bit of that ripping technique on the edges of the red. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue these down and I'm also gonna stitch around them. So I'm gonna do that to all of these pieces for my outside covers and I'll be back when I have that done. Okay guys, so I got my stitching done on all of these pieces and now we're just gonna attach them. I already put double-sided tape on the back here. Um, so I'm gonna take off this tape from the front cover, let's double check. Yeah, that's the front cover, um, which is gonna be this piece here. Which way do I like it better? Um, I think this way. Okay, so I'm gonna peel off this tape now. I'm gonna tuck in any overhang. And I'm also gonna add some uh, glue Okay, and I'm just going to make sure to attach this and place it in the center. And then I'm gonna flatten out this side just so I could use my bone folder. And this is how I do it. Obviously I still need to decorate and whatnot, but I think I'll just do that off camera and you guys should have seen that in my other uh, video where I showed you guys the project share in the beginning of what we were going to be making. Okay, it's the same idea here for the spine. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip this over to the back. And take the tape off of this one. Okay, and that is gonna get attached in the center. And then again, I'm gonna flatten this out and just press down. All right, guys. So that is how we did everything here. The only other thing is to cut off the ribbon, decorate the front and add in my cut aparts. But I'm gonna do that off camera and you guys could check out that finished project share um, on the first part of the tutorial. And here I could cut off the extra ribbon. Oh, I cut a lot. <laughs> this is one whole piece just from one, one side and then the other side. So I have some leftover. I could make some tags or whatever. We'll see. Um, and yeah, that is everything guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video showing me, uh, showing you guys how to even do the paper matting and putting the album together. Um, I hope you guys liked it. Let me know if I should do more of those in the future with my tutorials, like do like a separate video of paper matting. Maybe that's something you guys like, maybe not. I don't know. Let me know. Um, and don't forget to check out the cutting guide on my coffee website where you guys could um, cut out and make the base, which is also linked down below here, but also in my previous video. Um, for the coffee website, please make sure to consider making a donation. Um, I make those cutting guides for you guys. I have it written down for myself, but I make them for you guys. So it's a little bit easier to cut out your pages and make your album base to, and to follow along. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are looking for the tutorial as well, check down below. Um, I'll have the first part of the video linked down there as well. Um, and that is everything. So I'll see you guys in my next crafty video. Talk to you soon. Bye.